hopefully you're uh, all having a good AU like I am. So just to tell you a little bit about who I am and what I do, um, I think the most important part there is my job is uh, to make useful stuff. Um, this is the Victor Wastebasket. We are a 106-year-old company. The first thing that we produced was that wastebasket uh, in a wooden office environment where people used to throw cigarettes, they burned down. Imagine that. So we produced a metal wastebasket. Now we produce this. So what you see in the show or in the hub over here, this is really what we want your office to look like. And we understand that the world is changing drastically with millennials and how they want to work, where they want to work, and the things that happen in those spaces. So understanding the problem for us is always the key. Here's a few things that you probably are pretty familiar with. The way that people work is changing and where it takes place is changing drastically, right? How many people 10, 20 years ago ever would think of working in a Starbucks, right? I do it all the time now. Our industry is becoming diversified, right? Everybody says it's pretty easy to make office furniture. The knowledge of how to place that, use that to affect how people work is really the important part. The timelines to deliver are becoming much shorter. Everybody's heard that. The last one, uh, I was referenced Burger King, right? Make it, we want it our way. Um, we want that couch in our material, in our color. And can you make the arm on one side bigger? We do that for everybody. So a couple of distinct problems to us. Um, I always like to ask this question. We have 60,000 products and 20,000 finishes. Can anybody in the audience beat that? Dang, I was really hoping somebody would. Uh, we have global products that meet regional needs. So when we produce a chair, though that chair is produced globally, it's a little bit different in each region for a variety of functional as well as uh, legalities, right? It's a little smaller in Hong Kong because the stature of people is smaller and they don't need to meet nearly as many goals. Specials or customs are a way of life, like I said. We'll make it your way. Any way that you want, we'll do it. Uh, we engineer and manufacture products in our, that actually live within architecture. So even though we're a manufacturer, we have to live within the BIM world. BIM is becoming a way of life for everybody globally. And lastly, uh, our, our customers really struggle at times to understand the benefit that we bring. Hopefully, if you were at AU last year and you see the hub this year, you understand the difference in the benefit that we brought. So those are some things to give you the lay of the land of, of why we started on this journey five years ago. And we call it visualization. How can we show you what you need to know? We're not going to tell you. We're going to show you. We're going to let you live it and experience it. So we started with a foundation. And the foundation started with the right geometry. So five years ago, we started modeling our products in lightweight polymorphic geometry because we knew at a very core level we needed to render those products. And as VR and AR and MR started coming up, it was we needed to be able to build in those environments. Very quickly, we learned that we needed the right materials. So we started a materials library, right? 20,000 finishes. And it's not just putting it on a bed scanner that you got from Recall. You, you literally had to actually produce a file and manage it, right? And then we started building the teams that did this. So we put 24 modelers in our service centers that actually build and manage that geometry. We have a couple of folks that manage those materials. And then we started building out what I like to call the, the, uh, the group of chefs, the nine chefs. So on the left, you see five people who are dedicated to building in Stingray, 3D Studio Max, augmenting those materials and putting that together in the recipe. In the middle, you see the two gentlemen who are coder developers. Uh, Mike in the bottom is actually uh, a Forge developer, and we've entered into that. Um, we're actually manipulating and using Forge directly on a regular basis now. And on the right, you see myself and my counterpart, Brett. Um, we're innovation leaders. We go off and we hunt, as we like to say, for customers, internal customers. And we're not limited to marketing, so don't assume that that's uh, a barrier. Uh, we go out and run all over the place, including logistics and operations. So all the visualization starts from this foundation. Think of it as a farmhouse, right? You're going to build this farmhouse. If you don't have a strong foundation, you're not going to be able to add on later. We started two, uh, excuse me, three years ago with rendering. So how can we augment the rendering process inside of Steelcase? And, and we spend well in excess of a million dollars outsourcing rendering. How can we lessen that cost, improve quality, and decrease time to market? 
So we started doing this uh, in a couple of different ways. We started asking a couple of questions first. Rendering's great for individual products to put into catalogs, but the reality is, is that when you're paying $1,000 to $2,000 for that chair, you really kind of want to see the back of the chair and you wanted to see it in your color you're going to order. So that's a good start, but we wanted to augment that further. Uh, 360 images, as we call them, which is QTVR rendering or, or being able to put on a Google Cardboard, are great, but it's great for seeing this space. It's not great for looking at an individual product, and we have to be able to do both. When we do render, we outsource. We don't do it internally. We see this as a dead end road. Real time is coming very quickly, and we're trying to do as much as we possibly can in real time. So these are all hindrances because this is changing so rapidly. How do we deal with it? So we started off uh, a couple of different projects, one of them using WebGL, Autodesk Forge, the lightweight viewer. And we started asking, how might we? Um, one of the questions you'll hear us say a lot is, how might we do this? So we wanted to replace all static e-business images with WebGL content. I want to be able to show you your chair in your color in 3D on a web page. And we're doing that today in mass. Uh, wherever product is specified, we want to be able to see it there too, right? So the same thing that you see as a customer, I want my manufacturing person on the shop floor to be able to see that same thing. Yes, I got the right fabric on the right chair. Yes, I got the right color on the right chair. It drastically reduces our effort to train people in the factories. And then the last couple, um, assembly directions. Today we produce reams of paper. We're in the process of using Autodesk Forge to be able to, to put that into a functional methodology where we don't put any text in, so we don't have to convert to multiple languages, and we show you how to assemble that chair in 3D. So if you're one of our dealers and you're the you're person who's doing the assembly work in the field, you can watch this as if it's a video, and if you need to understand where that bolt goes in the back, you simply turn it around and watch it again. So as we rolled further down that path in these five years, one of the things that we started asking is, how might we use this to better certain processes like visitors? We have to show you our products. We have to give you an understanding of the benefit that we bring. So how do we give you a tour without the problems that we have of intellectual property, security, augmentation, right? We make medical furniture. I can't take you into a hospital because of HEPA. Uh, we have this really big customer called the GOV and the DOD. I can't show you what we've done because of security. We also started asking, uh, is, it our, is it possible to start reducing travel? Can our CEO give you a tour of our Munich facility without having to go to Munich? We realized quickly that headsets didn't work. We tried it, it fell flat on its face. As soon as we do this, because we have a dozen people coming into tour that include an architect, a designer, a customer, a dealer, everybody wanders off and they don't talk. And they don't talk enough already about what they want in that space. So as we bring those folks together, we said, we have all these artificial barriers. How do, we dis how do we disintegrate those barriers? How do we blow them right out of the water? And we started talking to Autodesk about that. So we created what we call Voss, the virtual office space. Three 70-inch screen monitors running Stingray in the background. It is a very, very large video game, about 60 gigs worth of video game. I can take you on a tour. Not only can I take you on a tour, but I can take you on a tour of places you can't go into. And one of those is actually behind that wall where those holes in the wall are. It's called our Innovation Center, where all of our intellectual property gets created. We also sell Innovation Centers. How do I give you a tour of that? So let's see what it looks like to walk through Voss. So this is the showroom. Outside you see uh, the space between our corporate headquarters and our showroom. And as we come around, here's the boss unit, and that door you can't go through. I can, but you can't. So Brett's going to give us a tour, and we're standing in Voss, and this is exactly how we do it with our customers that come to visit us. We tell them, look at the holes in the wall. We're going to go to the other side of the wall. As we walk through the space, and we'll make a left-hand turn, this is exactly where you can't go. And we show you how the Innovation Center works. We describe how we can come in and augment your process, work with you to improve your process, and gain a better understanding of what you do. And we do this with a lot of different customers. Like I said, everybody from the DOD to 
My favorite is Royal Caribbean, because I keep looking at them saying, can you help with a cruise? So in the next six months, uh, we currently have a Voss unit in Grand Rapids in our corporate headquarters, and we have another one in Munich, Germany. You can tour Munich, Germany from Grand Rapids. You can tour Grand Rapids from Munich, Germany. We're doing work with Autodesk using 3D Studio and their live tools. We have a booth on the shop floor where you can tour the medical facility and understand how we turn medical from the white, sterile, uh, hideous, I'm cold room to a, I'm comfortable, right? As a patient, you want to be comfortable. We're putting these in the next six months in all 36 of our showrooms. Uh, some of them will have Voss, some of them will have headset. We're looking at how to deliver 60 gigs of content to 36 locations, which if you know anything about gaming is incredibly difficult. There's not a lot of people who do that. Uh, and then the challenge of actually doing this with our dealers, because we are set up pretty much like an automotive environment in that we sell everything to dealers, which we don't own. Um, the big culmination to this was in March. We brought in for our national sales conference over 800 of our dealers. We told them, you're going to tour the Innovation Center. What we didn't tell them is you're going to do it virtually. Out of 800 people, we got no complaints, and almost every dealership asked immediately, how quickly can we get one of these, and can we create our own content? And we said, yes, work with Autodesk. It's great. So as we started to augment over the last six months, we started talking about what we might do, right? And everybody starts asking that, what can you do? How can you get there? And can you do it cheaper, faster, better? So we wanted to be able to understand if we could sell you a chair where you could put it in your space beforehand, right? And we've all seen this. Ikea does it. Others do it. Um, it's incredibly difficult, believe it or not, with us because a chair is actually pretty easy. As soon as I start putting panel walls or desks in, size becomes paramount. I cannot be off by very much, otherwise I will start causing problems. Uh, can we take that boss environment and move it into a mixed reality environment so that you can walk through a space anywhere in the world that you don't have to come to any one of our facilities? And then the last one is really important. Uh, we do this great thing called mock-ups. Customers want to sit in their furniture before they actually buy it. Uh, we don't like to do that. It's expensive. Uh, we had our first successful mock-up about a month ago, and it was so successful that we actually created the space because we were worried the customer wouldn't like the virtual environment and as we showed them the virtual environment and then said, let's go over to the real space, they said, why? We've already seen it. And we knew we were very successful in what we did. All we had to do was provide them with some fabric swatches so they could understand what that leather felt like, right? So as we're starting to play around with that AR functionality, and, and thanks to the functionality that's in Autodesk along with companies like Apple who are releasing AR kit, this has gone from an incredibly code-intensive process to this is about three hours of playing around with our folks in a lab. And all of a sudden, we had something that was totally workable. So we make stuff just like you guys do. But what can I tell you about what we've done?